Hello fellow Piper, you're very welcome to my sitting room. My name is Mikey Smith and I am going to be doing the Pipes classes for the Online Academy of Irish Music. Now if you've read the information you'll be aware that I'm running the classes in groups of three per tune. So each class or each group of three classes will look at one tune. The first lesson is going to introduce the tune, it's going to introduce the melody and we learn the melody. We'll go through it phrase by phrase. Um, we'll put in some very, very basic technique. The emphasis in this class, on this first class, will be on rhythm and phrasing and timing. The second class, we'll go back to that same tune again, and we'll introduce some more difficult piping technique. The piping technique will be examined in isolation and then applied to the tune where it fits in nicely. And in the third class, we will look at the same tune again, with more difficult piping technique, and we might introduce some elements of regulator playing and some variations to work on. So after the three classes, you should have a detailed case study, as it were, of each particular tune. Now for the purpose of this sample, I'm going to look at the third lesson. So I'd like you to use your imagination that you've already done the first two classes. And the tune I'm going to use for this sample class is the Hag at the Churn, uh, a tune made famous by the body band and the wonderful piping of Paddy Keenan. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, imagine that you've had the first lesson, we've gone through the tune phrase by phrase, we've looked at the various basic piping techniques and we have absolutely got the rhythm, the timing and the phrasing of the tune perfectly. We then moved on to the second class and we looked at some more difficult piping technique. And now, this, the third class, we're going to look at the tune with some variations, some more intricate techniques, and, hopefully, a little bit of regulator playing. So our melody, so far, from the first two classes, would sound something like this. some rows, some cuts, and some finger bounces. We're going to look at some more complicated techniques now. Okay, we're going to start off with the first part of the tune. <laughs> so the first thing I'd like you to notice is the hard bottom E. And the hard bottom E is played by lifting the chanter and lifting one finger for the E note. You keep the small finger on the chanter. And you should get a nice, decent, hard sounding E. And to help bring the E out, it sometimes can help by cutting with the A finger. Okay, this finger here. Okay, so if you want to pause the video and give that a quick shot. Okay, I'd like to have a look at some backstitching now. A backstitch from the A to the D. Nice. There we go. Don't worry about squeaks, that happens with the pipes. So, your backstitch from the A to the D. Now the backstitch is based on a C, A tight ornament. So, just to take it out of the tune, it's a tight C followed by a tight A. So you want to try and make sure to get this staccato. So keep the chanter airtight and lift the finger for the C and the A. Okay, so moving on. backstitched from the A to the G. So you can also backstitch from any note in the chanter to any other note. So again, the very same technique, so it's important to focus on that C, A. Okay. 
And in the last EFG run there we had a finger bounce. <laughs> simply very difficult to describe but as simply as possible you just let the fingers flop back onto the chanter and let them bounce against the timber. to have a look at. We run into the second part and we'll start off right at the top of the second part with a tight D C B triplet. So again keeping all the fingers close to the chanter playing each note individually and staccato so a pause you close the chanter between each note. Just take a moment to have a look at that. So pause the video there and have a shot at that. Lovely. Okay, we'll try a double G roll. Now in the previous lesson we would have looked at basic G rolls, but here we're going to try a roll with two cuts and a tap on a long G note. So your roll is going to have a C cut an A cut followed by your G tap. So it should sound something like this, hopefully. Okay, so the best thing to do is something like this. Forget about the tune, take this G roll completely out of it and break it down into its elements. second part of the tune. Okay, so again, if you just for use your imagination, in the second class, we would have looked at the G roll followed by the tap, that particular element there. So this is a double G roll followed by a tap. Listen carefully, the E bounce down to the D. So the technique should all start to be coming together. Little bits that we've picked up along the way, we can use over and over again in various different parts of the show. So our second part. Seamus Ennis style trill there on the high F. So you're just wobbling the G finger while playing the F note. So from the very beginning we'll just go back over all of those things in the tune. can become repetitive in the sense that you can use them in other tunes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play between the A and the D. Excuse me, the A and the G. So you're just going to repeat the A and the G. So where that's going to fit into the tune is into the first part and into the second half of the first part. Give 
that a shot for a couple of minutes, and if you would like, pause the video, and when you come back, we'll have a quick look at a little bit of regulator accompaniments.